mat den Wahlhucht, agus falch zu orscht, gen lesson show. Good morning to you and welcome to this lesson. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about winter, specifically the word winter, how it's used in different ways. So we're going to come up with a bunch of examples here on the board so that it's easier for you to do this yourself. So that using the word winter in all its glory, <laughs> all its different ways, feels less foreign to you. Because it can be a kind of weird word. It's also really appropriate to what's going on, at least around here, <laughs> in Maine. Okay, Gleva, let's get started here. Alrighty. <clears throat> Angiaurig. Angiaurig. The winter. Just the winter. Angiaurig. Lovely. Angiaurig. Giaurig. It's kind of a nice sound to it to my ear. Giaurig. Giaurig. Do you hear a certain maybe unexpected sound in the middle? Giaurig. There's a W sound right here. It's the MH. So when you have a longer Gallic word and an MH in the middle, oftentimes it'll sound like a W. Mm -hmm. Remember, Gallic doesn't have letters like W. So it has to make them through letter combinations like this, MH. There we are. Gleva. And Gyaurig. Okay. Skonyo. Great. It's nice. And Gyaurig. But let's attach more to it. Let's connect it to other words and phrases that we know. So we can really make it come alive for us. That's a secret to acquiring Gaelic quickly and also remembering it quickly too. If it's connected to things you already know, then your mind doesn't have to do so much work to try to stitch everything together, right? To connect the dots. Mm, give your mind a break. <laughs> and gyauruk. So let's add in more to help us remember this and connect it to what we know. And gyauruk. And gyauruk. Well, I mean, let's talk about opinions. Yeah. Stolium. And gyauruk. I like the winter. Stolium and Gyaurig. Gleva. Stolium and Gyaurig. Or if you don't like it. Chatolium. <laughs> I don't. Remember that lium there is the equivalent of I or me in this situation. Stolium and gyaurig. Chatolium and gyaurig. Chatol, chatol. It's like chaniel. Both are negative. Chatol. Okay, maha. Well, for me, <laughs> stolium <laughs> and gyaurig. <laughs> Stolume. Um, let's see, what else could we do? Mm. Well, let's describe winter. Ha and Gyaurig. Winter is Ha and Gyaurig. Ha and Gyaurig. Bria. Yeah? Ha and Gyaurig Bria. Han Gyaurig Fur Fur Han Gyaurig Savoch Yeah, some nice descriptors here. Savoch Quiet Savoch Ha and Gyaurig Mm. Well, unless you live near snowmobile trails. <laughs> then it's not Savoch at all. Those snow machines make a huge, huge racket. 
um, Han Gyeorug Fuur. Yeah, if you're somewhere where there's cold winter, it is definitely Fuur. Mm hmm. Han Gyeorug Fuur. Ha i Fuur aun a main and you. Oh, ha. Han Gyeorug Bria. Beautiful. Han Gyeorug Bria. Bria. Yeah, so this is how we'd talk about Angyaurug in a very straightforward way, using some describe, descriptors here, some describing words. And then we could also use our opinions, stolium, chatolium, Angyaurug, etc. Okay, gleva, gleva. One more way to help you remember, and a tip for you if you haven't heard this from me yet. Pictures. Pictures that are associated or con directly connected with words really help when learning language, really help us remember it because our minds process pictures far quicker than words. Think about it. Using emojis and such on the phone, we know exactly what it means very, very, very quickly. Yeah, whereas when we read words, sometimes we have to figure out what they're trying to say. Yeah. So, Use that to your advantage. That's a superpower of the human brain, pictures. So, pictures that are clear. <laughs> pictures can also be unclear, so please make them clear. I'm hoping that this one is clear for you. Snow, it's definitely in Gyaurig in Maine. Yeah, in Gyaurig. Okay, nice. So, <clears throat> that's one way that you'll see the word winter, in Gyaurig. Just in Gyaurig. Ooh. Another tip, learn this just as a chunk, like as a package, ungyaurig. Not just gyaurig by itself, but ungyaurig. Ungyaurig, the winter. Gaelic will often put in the into words. So it's the winter. I like the winter. Do you like the winter? I think that the winter is very long. You know, I'm not fond of the winter. Whereas in English, it's, at least in, in my English, it's much more naturally say, I don't like winter. I like winter. Winter is long. I think that winter is. There's no the, but in Gaelic there is. And it makes a difference if you want to sound like a native speaker. Absolutely. <laughs> An Gyaurig. The great thing about learning this as like a chunk here, as a package deal, is that it's perfect, grammatically perfect. You don't have to worry about that too. Yeah. An Gyaurig. And as you use this, and, be, and it becomes very natural to you, second nature, then you'll have an instinct for saying it ungyaurug, saying it perfectly, and ungyaurug, writing it perfectly. Maybe not the first time, or the second, or the hundredth, but eventually. So, top tip, really, really will save you years, I think, of learning words and phrases in chunks. Ungyaurug. So you've already got it kind of set up. You don't have to create it from scratch because it's very easy to make mistakes in the beginning. And when you're an intermediate learner, too. <laughs> okay, end rant. <laughs> it wasn't really a rant, though. End, end learning tip. Okay, gleva. So let's take a look at Ngeorig in another way. Now we're saying in the winter. Ounce <laughs> yaurig. If you've done my foundations course, you remember. Ounce, right? Ounce. Ounce yaurig. Ounce yaurig. Yeah. Gestures are really quick to, um, to remember words as well. Yeah, they work like images. You make images with your hands. Yeah. Use your brain superpowers. Okay. Ounce a yaurig. In the winter. Gleva. Okay, nice. Again, learn this as a chunk so that you've got the form of the perfectly. You've got the form of in perfectly. You don't have to create anything from scratch. But we need to, you know, add more to this so that we remember it better. What could we do? Ounce a yaurig. In the winter. What could we do? Ooh, things we see. Things we see. He, 
Jean, we see blank. He, Sheen, we see, let's see, oh well, one must here. Uh, <laughs> clever. <laughs> Ooh, he, Sheen, we see. What can we see in winter? He, Sheen, um, Ewing. Ewing, we see birds. Right. He, she, newing, or nahewing, the birds, in traditional Gaelic. He, she, newing, he, she, an schniach, an schniach, an schniach. Well, an schniach. Let's have let's have some illustrations here. And Schniach. I was out with my camera on Saturday, Saturday morning. We had really lovely snowfall. It was like a winter wonderland out there. I got lots of really great footage. Hint, hint. <laughs> For future videos. Hint, hint. And there was a type of snowflake I'd never seen before. It was like this. It had like little little discs or little circles on the end. Very delicate, very beautiful, and very clear too. It was snowing on top of my camera and I could see these very clearly, very small. It was really stunning. Snowflakes are amazing. That's that's one reason why I think you know Han Gyorg Bria. Bria. Beautiful. So Anschniach, we have some snowflakes here for the snow. Kishin Yoin birds Gleva Kishin and Schniach. What else could we do? Oh, what about things that we need? Like I, I could really use a hat in winter. Fe Mimi Blank. So Fe Mimi means I need. It's like in the sense of it would be useful for me to do or have something. And I'm going to make a video about that as well. The different kind of senses of need, the different feelings of need, the different words and phrases that we use in Gaelic to communicate different kinds of needs. Femimi is kind of low-key. <laughs> Pretty low-key in comparison to others. So femimi... Femi me, what can we do? Femi me at, at. Femi me at. Ounce a yaurig. Yeah. Femi me at, ounce a yaurig. Clever. Femi me scarfa. Scarfa. It's a bit, a little bit like an aggressive kind of worm, but it's a scarfa. <laughs> scarfa. At scarfa. Oh, this is really lucky. I've got them right here. <laughs> At Maybe you've seen this one before. At Scarfa. Mmm. Oh ho. Mitaken. <laughs> yeah, I guess these are hand warmers more. I wear these all the time. They're really wonderful uh, in the yurt when it's cold in the morning. Yeah. Let's say they're they're mittens though, yeah? Mitaken. Mitaken. Let's put that up here on the board. Mitaken. 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 Kleva. And just a bit of space there. Okay, maha. Femi mi at. Ounce yaurig. Oh, femi. <laughs> femi mi scarfa. Ounce yaurig. Femi mi mitaken. 
femi mi mitaken an zi jaurug or ha an jaurug fuur. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> it's fun to string these together. It's nice. Very nice. Okay, maha. Let's see. So we have an gyaurug, the winter, very straightforward, just the winter. Aunce gyaurug, in the winter. And what about words that are associated with the winter? We're going to go into the genitive case. <laughs> and it's actually very straightforward. Because if you recognize that this is just an gyaurug with a little change, that's what we're going to see down here. It's not going to change entirely. Just a little slight difference. Okay, so this is best seen with an example. Um, winter, winter stuff. Winter snow, but I mean, there's no snow. At least in Maine, there's no snow at other times. Um, wind, wind, winter wind. Goo, it's a great word for wind. Kind of an all-purpose word for wind. There are different words for different kinds of winds. Uh, but gu, really nice, straightforward word. Gu, 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 gu. Very common word for wind. So we want to say wind of winter, right? Winter wind. In the Gallic mindset, it's more wind of winter. Technically, we want to say wind of the winter. So what do we do for that? We just do this. Gu, a, and then we need a little i here at the end. That's a very common pattern, very common feature. If you have a word that you're familiar with and all of a sudden a form has an i at the end, there's a good chance it means of that thing. Yeah. So we have gyaurug, right? Winter, an gyaurug. We got that. And then we see yauri. That looks like gyaurug, but there's an I at the end. It probably means of winter. Kleva. These patterns are so helpful. I wish I had learned more of them when I was starting off with Gaelic. I think things would have been a lot less frustrating for me, honestly. All right, Gleva. So, gu a yauri, wind of the winter. Lovely, isn't that nice? Gu a yauri, gu a yauri, wind of the winter. Things often sound, in my opinion, more epic in Gaelic <laughs> when they're said literally. Yeah. Mm. And the great thing about this pattern, kind of like how we have these ones here, you can just put anything on the other side. Yeah. So with this kind of pattern, you can put anything. So we're looking for nouns, right? Wind of winter, cold of winter, darkness of winter, etc., etc., etc. What about birds of winter? Yoin, right? Yoin, yoin, a yauri, the birds of winter. When I was little, my mom and I would feed the the cardinals and the blue jays. They and their colors would be so beautiful, muted, you know, because it's it's springtime. Uh, excuse me, winter time, but they would be right there in the snow. These red and blue birds, and they would be eating all the seeds. Lovely. Yoin, yoin. Yeah, there we are. Ewing. I can put this over here. It might be easier to see. Yeah, there we go. Gleva. Okay. Ewing a yodi. Birds of winter, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, we can add on anything here, any noun right beforehand, and it means of the winter, that thing of the winter. Or, in, I guess if we were to bring it back into the English mindset, Winter wind, winter birds. Yeah, winter used as a, as a describer. Yeah. Kleva. Yoin a yauri. Yoin a yauri. Isn't that lovely? Yoin a yauri. That's, ugh. Oh, 
Gallic sounds so poetic. And here we have alliteration, right? The same sound at the beginning of each word. Yoin a yodi. Not perfect alliteration, but it's close. Yoin a yodi. Oh, and we're just talking about, you know, winter birds. <laughs> Not just though, they're, they're really spectacular as well. Very fun to watch. They have a lot of personality birds. Okay, Maha. Well, before I end up talking your ear off about birds and things I love in winter, <laughs> let's bring part one to a close here. Thank you so much for joining me. Rewatch this as many times as is, is useful to you. And we rarely get th everything, every bit of information on the very first watch. Even if you're an inter intermediate student. I have some intermediate students of mine who every time they watch one of my videos, they, they get a little something else from it. Even something like this. Something that maybe they feel quite confident in. They notice something else. It's good to have aha moments. Like, ah, mm. okay. Gleva. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in part two. Gleva.